Since I've already looked at lots of ozone stuff recently, I wasn't going to make a video about these particular Twinkie-shaped units because I thought they'll just be the standard circuitry inside. But it turns out they're not. Not by a long chalk. It turns out really, really interesting. Let me show you the listing for these. They're described as refrigerator, air purifier, closet, deodorizer, filter, fridge, food fresh keeper. And they're all over the internet. If you do a search for refrigerator air purifier or refrigerator or fridge ozone, uh, you'll find these things on both eBay and AliExpress. And they're available in two versions. One which has an 18650 cell and a slightly disappointing one amp power cell. But, you know, we can do things about that. We can change these cells. And the other type, with its, uh, with its very low quiescent current of 8 microamps, this one takes standard uh, AA batteries. It takes a, a set of four of them. And there are three LEDs in the front, blue LEDs plus a red-green button. I think it will be a red-green button in this one, because uh, the other one definitely has it. And if you press and hold it, it lights up and the unit starts producing ozone. Now, one of the weaknesses of this design is that uh, this has a very thin slot. It's a shame it isn't more open, but let me uh, hold this ozone generator up, this same module that's out of this, and I shall hold it up to the microphone and you can actually hear what's coming out. So you'll hear a whistle. And probably the slight draft of air coming out. It's the type of ozone generator that uses a little high voltage module and it's got a spike just punched out of uh, stainless steel behind another piece of stainless steel which has a hole in it so that it creates a strong ionic airflow and also creates a slight corona discharge in the tip. Nothing to do with coronavirus, it's just the corona means crown, it just means that little crown of little uh, conductive glowing tendrils that you get when you ionize air and that's the bit that does all the, the magic it creates ozone which does the air freshening so this one the one with the double a's when you press the button it turns on and you can select uh, three time delays as far as i can see but that's it it turns off after you've done one cycle but this one the with the rechargeable battery when you turn it on you can choose the strength so to speak and it cycles on and off with a long time off and then every so often it will just power on for the time selected and the, the three little LEDs in the front and it just cycles basically continually until the battery's running low then it flashes the indicator button to warn the battery's running low it lasts a good length of time and it puts out one hell of a lot of ozone for such a small device but anyway let's get this stuff out of the way because I've already had the circuit board out we can cut straight to the chase here so the circuit board is out. Let's zoom down this. This is the back of the circuit board. I shall zoom in just a little bit. Not a lot to point out here. It's worth mentioning There's a li the little white strands are from the cotton bud I was using to try and remove flux. We've got two really big pads here for the battery. Light blue to represent negative, red to represent positive. And they've got the outline here in dark blue to represent the switch negative and the positive for the... Uh, the ozone module, noting that the red is connected straight to the red here. We've got the USB connector here with the orange denoting the USB in. I'll just cut straight to the other side. If you want to try reverse engineer this, it's going to be quite tricky because surface mount stuff tends to have hidden tracks. But I shall uh, show you the front because I've already reverse engineered it. So, we have the USB coming on and the first thing after the USB denoted uh, by the orange is the USB in, it's the 5 volt in. Things worthy of note, it's got a capacitor straight across it for filtering. There are three capacitors in the circuit, one for the battery protection and one for the processor and one for the USB. Um, it's got a resistor which acts as a, a sort of pull down resistor just to allow it, the processor to sense the, uh, the when USB is connected. And it's got a diode uh, which is quite odd, I'll show you that in the schematic afterwards. And also another resistor so the processor can actually sense when it's plugged into USB. Unusually, as well as the LTH7 charge control chip, this chip basically charges the battery and deals with all the sort of stopping at the correct voltage levels, limit the current, everything. It's programmed by a single resistor here, 2K, which sets 500 milliamps. But unusually, for this type of product, it has the full suite of the battery protection. It's got the DW01 and the dual MOSFET here. 
And that has a, a couple of components associated with it. It's actually got two resistors and a capacitor associated with it. After that, it's really just down to a button that's feeding straight over to the microcontroller, the transistor, the MOSFET, to switch the ozone generator on. And then it's got the LEDs at the end here. Three blue ones with one, just one resistor for them all. And then the red and green push button one with red and green LED in a single package with its own resistor as well so it can display, well, one blue one and either red or green simultaneously. I think that's about it. Let's bring in the schematic and we shall explore it in detail. So I shall zoom down on this further. It's an interesting circuit. USB comes in, it has that filter capacitor across it, and it's also got that little load resistor, the 100K, possibly to prevent false sensing, because the processor does monitor the USB input line. It goes to the LTH7 charge controller, which then goes to the battery, and it has two resistors associated with it. The 2K resistor sets the current at which it's going to charge. In this case, it's 500 milliamps, which is quite decent. The other resistor is just a... Uh, a series resistor for protection of the against dif slight voltage differences and it goes over to the processor to tell it when it's charging. With these two resistors here, with this resistor coming from the 5 volt rail to the processor and the one from the charger, when it's plugged in, the processor can switch on this uh, red green light and start flashing to say I'm charging and then it can monitor the state of the charge by monitoring the output from the charge chip. The battery, I've not drawn all the battery protection circuit. I've just drawn it as a wee module with associated components. It's a standard lithium battery. It's got the DW01 and MOSFETs. And it has a 100 ohm and a capacitor across the battery effectively to actually get a nice stable voltage so it can monitor the battery voltage even if it's fluctuating and under load. It also has a 1K resistor. The 1K resistor is used to measure the voltage across the switching MOSFETs. The reason it does that is if you overload it or short circuit the uh, the battery circuit, the voltage across the MOSFETs will rise up. And when it does so, if it reaches 0.15 volts, this chip detects that via this resistor, the voltage difference, and then it cuts it off and it goes into a protection mode. The battery voltage then does two things. It goes to the ozone generator, the little module itself, this little module, which is switched by that little MOSFET. But it also goes to the processor, but it does so via a Schottky diode. And the processor is also powered directly from the USB supply by a standard silicon diode. This one will drop about 0.2 volts. This one will drop about uh, 0.6. And I'm not 100% sure why they're doing that. I thought it might have just tapped directly off the battery supply, but I suppose the battery is running low. As soon as you plug it into charge, it means it can burst back into life again. Initially, I thought it was the fact that this design has that little charging port underneath. Uh, and you can run the cable out, and it's nice that this unit will actually allow you to just run this while it's charging. A lot of other units, when you plug them into charge, they'll stop. They won't actually allow the unit to run, which I'm not really sure why they do that. But in this instance, if you plug it in, it immediately powers the processor up. I thought they might have taken the ozone from that side as well, because then even if the battery was super low, it would have run at full power as it was charging, but they're not doing that. That had me perplexed for a moment. But anyway, either the USB supply or the battery supply, whichever the vol has the higher voltage will win the war, and it will basically power the processor. The processor has... The two inputs for the measure, detecting the USB presence uh, supply and the charge status, it has a, also a button input which just pulls to the zero volt rail. It has the output to the MOSFET via resistor, and then it has the five LEDs, the three blue ones and the red and green one, each with a 10K resistor. It seems quite a high value of resistor, but LEDs these days are so sensitive that, you know, even with that high value of resistor, you can still easily see when they power up the little indicators in there. They don't have to be that bright. All they are is just an indicator of uh, the mode. I shall turn that back off again. And that's more or less the circuitry. 
the three capacitors I mentioned, one across USB, one across the processor for stability, and one for stability of battery voltage detection. It's really unusually textbook. Those diodes are strange. It's like the person who designed this was actually quite knowledgeable about what they were designing and when instead of just saying how cheap can I make it, they decided to make a decent module. One thing is worth mentioning about this, one thing I didn't like that much, is that this is a high voltage module and it sits in under here. And this unit then sits in above the circuit board and it's got a little uh, support that clips in here. Very neat, but you've got the high voltage connections under here and they just stuffed all the wires, including the low voltage ones, right up against that high voltage connection. And then they'd stuffed all the high voltage wires in. I'm guessing they thought it was neater and it made it easier to actually put the case on. But uh, it's very strange. Another thing is that the they've got this little cowl that cover, comes over here and partially covers the ozone output hole. Because all this uh, unit is in here, there's a, a metal plate with a hole and behind it is that sharp spike. And the uh, because of the vicinity of the sharp spike to the plate, it causes a quite a high ion flow, causes that little discharge that creates the that splits the oxygen apart and lets it reform into ozone. Um but they've covered that over partially. I'm not sure why that is. It's also worth mentioning that this is a very standard module. It seems industry standard, even though it, it looks like it comes from different manufacturers because there's different assembly techniques here. Uh, but they've actually cut it down. They've glued it into here. It looks like it was originally designed to slot in and hold in place with the lid, but they've actually cut it down as if it was just too big and it somehow filled the case in some way. But it's interesting. It's very neat. I don't know which is best. I kind of like each has its own merits. If you put this in a stale cupboard, like a, a wardrobe or something that's smelling a bit musty, you just hung it up and you, you could just use this as an air freshener, just put it through one cycle. It'll put down a controlled portion of ozone into the air to combat smells and mold spores and things like that. But this one's quite useful in the sense that you charge it and then you can put it into that continuous mode that it will just put out X amount of ozone for a certain time uh, every period of time. But they're quite well made. Very well made. It's one of the best I've seen so far, which is uh, which is praise indeed for the manufacturer. But there we go. Uh, it's interesting also that the, manuf the supplier, the eBay supplier I got these from, I ordered one of each from them, and now they say they won't ship to the man. It's like, oh, that was complicated. Let's not ship to the man. So let's not name them so nobody actually goes and buys stuff from them. The bitch that I am when they do things like that. But I'm going to reassemble this now. And I'm going to put the wiring in much neater and more compliant than the way it was before. But uh, very interesting little units. Definitely well worth taking apart. A cut above the rest. <laughs>